My guest today is a Ugandan, one that could be described as of many contradictions. She studied in Uganda, Britain, and graduated as a chemical engineer in the UK and went to the USA. She is a real celebrity who has acted in a number of films in Los Angeles, including one of my favorites, Star Trek in 2009. She started a production company called Savannah Moon Productions that is nearly 10 years now and has featured powerful series like Beneath the Lies, currently showing on the UBC TV. She is a motivational speaker and most surprising, she works for an oil and gas company in Uganda as a petroleum engineer. Some people believe tree, tree, tree to be a proverb. The curse of the Lord is in the house of the wicked but he blesses the habitation of the just. I am Oscar Semoyam Soke, and this is NBS Face Off. Welcome to NBS Face Off, uh, Ms. Nana Hill Kaga. Thank you oh, very much. Nana Hill. Nana Kaga. Nana Hill Kaga. Hill McPherson. It's, it's a long, it's another, it's a story for another Let's day. get into it, because... <laughs> Is, is hill because you live on a on a hill or hill a married name? Or uh, hill hill? Um, was my first marriage. Yeah. Uh, God rest his soul in peace. He yeah. passed away, and then uh, McPherson was my second marriage, which didn't work out. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for number three. We might mm -hmm. just hyphenate the whole way. Yes. Yes. So you might be Nana Hill McPherson <laughs> Kaga. <laughs> But for now, Nana Kaga could yeah. work very well. Yes, Nana Kaga. But if I went to Los Angeles, for example, yes. the only name that could find you would be Nana Hill. Nana Hill was my stage right. name, yes. Mm. Yes. So how does a girl, a Mumbeja, move from Uganda to Bristol, then on to Birmingham, and then to the USA as an engineer, and then end up as a movie <laughs> right, in a star, a movie star in Star Trek? Ah. Enterprise crew at that. Yes, mm. yes. Okay, when um, well, when I was little, I, mm. I, I, I used to think of myself as a storyteller. And um, ironically, I'm both an artist and a scientist. Mm. So I come from a family of engineers. My father is a civil engineer. All my brothers and sisters are engineers of sorts, apart from one who decided to do finances so he could do our accounting. Mm. Um, so I decided, you know, I wanted to do something where I could have a broad spectrum of choices in engineering. And um, chemical engineering does that for you. Mm. So it gives you, you can either be a process engineer, petroleum, work in makeup. It, it's, there's a lot of options when you're a chemical engineer. So I graduated in 2000 and uh, with my degree decided you know what let me go to Hollywood let mm. me see because Just like that yes I mean a lot of times mm. when I was growing up black women in Hollywood were light-skinned they were not this color mm. so I'm one of those people you tell it's not possible and I straight away I go how I get this smile on my face like of course mm. it's possible so I um, after my, I got my degree I got on a plane and I said I'm going to Hollywood and my parents thought I was crazy so did everyone else mm. and I just or want perhaps to you work <laughs> I am crazy naturally yes. most people will tell mm. you that so I am um, yes I went to Hollywood ironically I get there I had a friend who had been at university with me she was American Yvette so she went to her first audition for her she was a drama student mm. so she went to her first audition and I decided to tag along and uh, uh, it was ironic. They were casting for Pepsi and they were looking for a dark skinned woman to compliment this blonde, angelic um, Caucasian girl. Right. So, all this, I walk into this room, I've never seen so many beautiful women. It is surreal. They're mm. gorgeous, they're stunning, they're mixes of all sorts. And there's me, you know, made in Uganda, pretty much undiluted, Mumbeja. So, I walk in and I sit on the side and this. Uh, very, very flamboyant casting agent walks out and is shouting, I can't find a black woman. Then he sees me and he goes, that's my stripper. That's her. Stripper? Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So I was supposed to climb a pole. I was a 1970s stripper. So he asked me, can you climb? I said, of course I can climb. I'm from Africa. Good and God. you? No. <clears throat> so right. I went home that night and started clambering over everything I could find. And then I shot this Pepsi uh, commercial the next day and I got paid so much money. It was surreal. Mm. But then 
I decided, you know, I'm not going to do it for now. It wasn't time. So I got a job working on US military contracts. I'm pretty good with guns, um, just basically modifying weapons. So I moved to Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I worked there for two years, just basically on US military contracts. Then while there, I went to a Walmart and got spotted by Steve Jobs. At the time, he was launching the um, iPhone, the Apple. Like, Steve Jobs yes. spotted you. Yeah, I was in right. Walmart in my pajamas, ironically. Mm -hmm. And this he was a weird looking gentleman, always wore pollen necks. So I'm walking down this island. This guy keeps following me, kept following me. And I'm thinking, so I turned around to him. Please don't. You have to edit this. I said to him, I don't do porn, mm -hmm. you know. Mm. Technically, we had to clear that out of the way. And he just looked at me and didn't say anything. So I'm about to pay for my groceries. He goes, you're that girl. Like, I'm looking for an Afro-haired girl. And I said, okay, this is really weird. So he gave me his card. And at the time, I didn't know who Steve Jobs was. Wow. So I took it home to my husband and I was shouting at him, can you imagine? I don't know what he thought. And then he looked at it and my, actually my husband at the time almost had a heart attack. He goes, do you know who this guy is? I was like, no. So he said, we're calling him in the morning. We did. And then I was on a plane to Seattle by 10 a.m a private jet, oh, I've never been on morning, one. Yes, yes. and um, yeah, I'm that silhouette that goes on dos tres mm. with you too. So yeah, yeah. then um, after that, I started getting job offers, then I got a manager. So I put chemical engineering on the side for a little bit. Mm. And I went to Hollywood. And I was that girl who smiled in the Dove commercial, the Pepsi commercial. And then one day, this is really, really, really strange, they, t they tell me they're looking for a Haitian. Um, to act in CSI New York. Someone from Haiti. From Haiti. Mm. And my manager's like, you can do it, Nana. You can do anything you put your mind to. I'm like, okay. So I walk into this room. I'd never even heard a, a Haitian accent. Mm. I didn't know what it sounded like. So this gentleman asked me, where are you from? I said, Port-au-Prince. It's the only city I knew. And then he goes, oh, okay, let's go. So I read. And I'm walking out. And I walk past Lupita Nyong'o at the time. She was also reading for the same part. Mm. Ironically, I got it. And wow. I, I, the day of the set, everyone's talking to me in French. And I'm like, OK, li I'm, I lied. Mm. No, I'm, I'm actually Ugandan. So <laughs> and how did that go? Um, the, the, the director just bust out laughing. He said, I knew there was something about you that you were talking. And I, have, I mm. had a Haitian girlfriend, and she did not look like you. She did not mm. sound like you. Mm. But we got through it, and I got to work with amazing people. Gary Sinise, Melania, they're just absolutely fantastic. Mm. So I was there for about four episodes. Um, and then, yeah, then I moved on, and I booked uh, The Life, which was on NBC at the time. Uh, with a British actor, the red-haired one, what's his name? Damien something or mm. the other, fantastic guy. And then I moved on to get my own web series, which was called Runway Stars. And then I moved on to do, he's just not that into you, with Ben yes. Affleck and Jennifer yeah. Aniston. And then I moved on to do Star Trek, which you said is one of your favorite. Indeed, yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes, incredible. And you've done music videos as well. Yes, I did Lenny Kravitz. Amy mm. Winehouse. Um, wow. Yes. Uh, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Another one of my favorites. She was fantastic. She was such a, a tortured soul, though. I mean, mm. it was really, really odd, but she was so friendly and so... And it was visible as you were shooting and everything. Yes, it, yes. It mm. just uh, it got to a point, I don't know what she was doing at the time, and she just passed out in the middle of the shoot, so we had to wait for about four hours while they revived her and paramedics. So she was an interesting And girl. revived and continued with the shoot? Yes, oh. of course. It's people's money. In Hollywood, you're not a person, you're a product. Yeah. You know, they do whatever it takes to get you standing up and in front of the camera. Mm. And it doesn't matter if you're having a bad day, if you don't feel great, you have a job to do. Yeah. And work is work, you'll be revived work is work. and you perform. Yes, and whatever it takes to revive you. Mm. The after effects we can deal with after the budget's been closed and are tied up neatly yeah. with a bow. And, and th this mindset, you know, in Uganda we have a, uh, in Uganda we have a scientist and then we have uh, an artist. Yes. But you're, you're an engineer. I do have engineering friends, especially in Rotary, and we're always teasing them that they're engineers. But yes. now we have uh, an engineer who's artistic. How, how did you blend that? You know what? I think it's from my father. Mm. You know, he's a civil engineer, but he's also very good at art. Mm. He was really an That's excellent. what I was thinking. That's yeah, he's notes. a very, very... Engineers are calculating angles and yes. everything, not art. Yes, he's, mm. very, he's very good at art. But then my mother is a performer. 
she's like the I think personally if she hadn't had us and gotten mm -hmm. married mm -hmm. and the mindset at that time was okay for a woman to go off and pursue her dreams I think she would have literally broken barriers my mother is one of the most amazing people I know she there's nothing she can't do but she's been a fantastic mother I, mm -hmm. I do. my mother's fearless so um, I think I got both sides of both of them. I'm, I like to think I got the best of both mm. of my parents. Yeah. And it blended on a 50-50 level, ironically. So I'm a great scientist and In I'm also your a opinion, great artist. It's a 50 /50. Yeah, I think yes. so. I think mm. so. Yeah, That's let's it. keep it at my yes. parents are watching. We mm. gotta keep it 50-50. We'll stop for a break. <laughs>
the benefits for most Ugandans are not for the white collar jobs. It's not for the 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 software engineer, the project mm. manager. I think we need but to get them. But even the other benefits, we can't get them. Yes. They, they've said they need a special kind of driver. Yes. They need a special a kind of A certified driver. Uh, yes, with certain certifications. They're actually shipping in people from abroad to but weld it's incredible. to be electricians. Yes. So why don't we have a standard so that people can... Uh, work towards the standards, I train think, and follow the standards. Uh, I think that our government has let us down in that because mm. technically a welder is a welder. Yeah. And and w the government should have pushed that even the standards that these international companies come mm. with and say that they cannot employ anyone for insurance purposes unless, of course, they're certified under blah, yeah. blah, blah. Yeah. The government is at liberty to say, while that may be, we'd still had welders in place mm. that can be trained for three yeah. months and they take and they over take these positions. Yes. And Same as a driver. A driver will be exactly. a driver. Exactly. If there's and a standard you want, you've published the, 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 the standards, yes. then you train to them. Exactly. And it's mm. quite sad that we um, have lost all this revenue for our people because remember, we went through the exploration phase, the appraisal phase, now we're moving into development. And most Ugandans have not yet benefited from the positions that should have been handed to them. You mm. know, so it's it's quite sad and disheartening because the money must is always made in the normal jobs, the day-to-day -day jobs. Mm. Mm. It doesn't take a certain skill set. Okay, so I we, find... We can cook matoke. Of course, same. we can do laundry. Yeah, you yeah, know? We yeah, can do laundry, you know, so. but you will find... Are there standards for that as well? Uh, yes, you'll and find in these campsites, uh, mm. like even the laundry people are either Chinese or they're actually importing people in to do the laundry, to do the cooking. It's quite shocking, really. Mm. And they're talking about, oh, these are the standards. I mean, what a medical profession is a medical professional. Yeah. I find it hard to be convinced that you have to fly in someone with a certain medical knowledge to treat malaria, which is a disease that is literally mm. been in this particular mm. part of the world for... And if you had malaria in the US, you could die. Exactly. Because they wouldn't know what to do. But they're shipping in certain doctors to treat Ugandans on malaria. So what's the meaning of local content then? I, I struggle. I mm. struggle to understand that. I've struggled to understand it for a while. And unfortunately, uh, the the definition of local content by the Ugandan government keeps changing. It keeps changing. The documents keep changing. The guidelines keep changing. And we cannot agree to what must happen. Mm. And it must happen soon. Otherwise, we're going to have a generational gap whereby you're still going to, let's just say you implement it five years from now, because of course when policies are made, yeah. they take time we to implement. To grown, yes. Exactly. Mm. So in those five years, you're still going to be shipping in labor from abroad while people sign off or reject or do all sorts. So it's, it's very local content in Uganda is yet to be defined and yet it's very clear. Mm. There's certain jobs that must be for Ugandans. Okay. I can understand you shipping in a project manager because of course we don't have a history of you know executing projects on such a large scale mm. but at the very same time that project manager needs to be given a timeline of when they have to exit mm. so whoever stands below them must be a ugandan so that they actually acquire the skill set to take over in a certain time but unfortunately that's not happening mm. you know they're just issuing work permits to people and saying, okay, you know, we don't have that manpower. We don't know of people that have that manpower. I know Ugandans that are working in the U.S. that can be called home to take up some of these positions, mm. but they haven't been. Yeah. You know? I, I am a teacher. Yes. Um, how do we get role models like you to encourage students to be engineers? Uh, and ironically, uh, students want to be film stars. <laughs> They do. It's a generation that's addicted mm. to glamour. I don't know if it's the social media part, mm. but engineering is a beautiful thing because it shapes the mind. You see life in technicolor, in angles, in clean lines. The ability to be an engineer is the ability to build, to construct, to make something out of nothing. And I think there's a romanticism that about engineering that has not been explained to people. In fact, being a woman engineer is the most powerful thing that I, you can be because... You think so? I think so. Mm. I think so. There's not a single day... Women, we are naturalists, we're mm. builders, we're motivators. We're, but imagine combining those attributes of the female side and actually building a dam, a road, a building. It's, there's a way you look at life, maybe in a man, I, I can't say I'm a man, mm. so, but for me as a woman, it's also the ability to stand amongst your peers, whether men or women, and someone says, do you see that one? Mm. She's an engineer, or she's a doctor, or she's a lawyer. I find engineering is, 
you know, people look at you like, you know, to be an engineer, you must have given up on life or something like that. Mm. I don't know. But I think personally, there's nothing you can ask me to do that I wouldn't sit down and think. Mm. It is possible. I can do it. I just need a, a minute to think about how it can be done. Mm. Yeah, so. It's, 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 it's interesting when you put it like that because the real challenge in Uganda is there's a decision that engineers must be clever. Now, so it's people like yourselves that went to guys that end up as engineers. It, Whereas no. if we said engineers, if engineering can be a passion, then everyone would pick it up. It, we, my old father was, it was is not uh, being clever. an engineer who didn't study engineering, but he, but he built the best exactly. uh, houses, yes. Oh mm. my, you just said that mm. because I think people misconstrue being clever. I not think people, that's the system. If, if it's, you, 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 it's a system. I said, if you're going to be an engineer, you need only the good grades and passion won't get you into engineering. But it's sad because we are now raising a generation that's under pressure to prove that they're intellectually capable mm. of fulfilling certain professions. Mm. Engineering is the ability to take a box, a paper box, and decide I'm going to cover it from the top to the bottom and make it a piggy bank. That doesn't take cleverness. It takes a need and the ability to fulfill that need or a requirement. So while people talk about being clever and being a certain intellectual level, I find that very, very disturbing because mm. what you're already telling certain children, and remember, mm. certain children do not come into their own in mentally until we all don't go at the same time. So going to Gaza and you compete against someone who got a four and someone who got an eight, it might be at that point in their life when they got eight in P7, they were not emotionally, mentally, mm. physically. And mind you, eight is a very good school. It's still a very good school. Distinctions only. Exactly. So mm. you, then you go to Gaza where apparently everyone got a four. But it is not necessary that they were clever. And, and quote me, mm. I think that it is because maybe someone pushed them at that point. You will get, I met a few people when I was in school where you would question how they ended up there. Mm. And even now in life, when I look at them where they are, you question how they ended up being a mm. guy as a girl. Well, some people are clever. Exactly. Book clever. Then you find someone who went to life, a yes. local school, mm. like apparently we call them local schools, mm. which is a really bad thing. But they're literally, they're trailblazers. You sit down with them and you talk to them and they're offering solutions and amazing. I, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Mm. Sorry, I get really passionate. <laughs> we like the things. passion. Let's stop for a quick break. <laughs> Thank you for watching NBS Face Off. I am Oscar Semwe Amsoke with the wonderful Nana Kaga. I'd like to focus on one of your productions. Yes. Well, the one I know, yes. Beneath the Lies. Yes. I know of it. Yes. But let me ask, let me, let me, before I go, go into there, let me ask you, how do you choose plays? How do you choose names? How do you choose what to write, in which to star? Because it's Mela. Yes. Last Breath. Yes. Mm. Um, I don't, uh, to be honest, I don't know. You know, I write all, all my scripts. I mm. literally wrote the entire season for Beneath the Lies, the entire season for Mella. So in between raising three children and doing everything else I do, I write. I normally write at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yeah. I find it's the most quiet raising time. Raising three children, uh, yes. going to work as an engineer, uh, yes. running writing a production scripts, company. running a production company, writing the scripts at 2 a.m. Uh, yes, and sometimes being a motivational to direct speaker. And, a, yes. and also I, um, I have a foundation, which I'll tell you about at right. some point. Mm. Yes. Um, the names come to me, you know, it's, it's really, really strange. I, I will be sitting there and then I get an idea. You see, I think in life we mm. miss the moments. I like to tell people that we miss the moments. We don't take time to study people. We don't take time to really absorb our journey through life. Mm. To see, you know, every Monday I make sure I don't drive. I will jump on a border, I will walk if necessary because I absorb the, the, the energy of everything going on around me because most of the time when we're in cars you're always trying to get somewhere you know when you enter a car straight away you, your brain engages to I must get somewhere I must get through traffic I must do all this and then everything every beautiful thing around you 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 just don't see so I, I, I literally every Monday I take time to sit on benches 
sometimes to look at my coworkers, to actually absorb, to ask people how they're doing. Even if it's my maid or the gate man, you'd be surprised by the stories you hear. And most of them are either inspirational, some are helpless, others are just funny. And at that moment is when I get these ideas and I say to myself, if I don't put it down on paper, I'll miss all of this, it'll be gone. Nobody will ever know me enough for me to sit down and tell them everything I've absorbed. So the only way I know how to do it is to put it on paper, mm. yes. And then I and come up with his name. Yes, and the scripts. Yeah. But, but uh, beneath the lies. Yes. Started out on Urban and now moved to UBC. Yes. Is that a downgrade? And, and I shouldn't ask this because <laughs> UBC is a national career, but UBC is not enjoying good PR at the moment. No, How no. How does a program move from Urban to UBC? You know, Beneath the Lines had a very complicated story. I don't know if you had it. Mm. Uh, we, um, I wrote it uh, with my business partner at the time, Cedric Babu, and we decided we were going to do something um, phenomenal in the Uganda film industry. So we got all these celebrities apparently together, they call them celebrities, mm. but I call them accomplished people in their field at the time. They had paid their dues and they came with a demographic, so we didn't need to really market beneath the lies, ag sorry, beneath the lies aggressively. Um, so we, we got this cast together and we tried to look around for a crew and I will say this, I think I underestimated the ability of Ugandan uh, production personnel because mm. in fact it was an insult to them because we brought in Kenyans to do the job so we shot 12 episodes we completed the season and everything in that studio at the time got robbed from the plugs to the sockets everything was taken the backup drives the laptops for it, a reason I, I'm yet to understand I'll never know it was mm. a traumatic time because we had um, invested all this money all this time into this production and then suddenly we had nothing and uh, it was quite shocking. So Cedric and I sat down one day after the trauma of trying to find out what exactly happened. And I said to him, we can't do this. We, we cannot sit and look people in the eye and say, sorry, I know we promised you an, a fantastic show, mm. but it's gone. So I said, let's scrape together what we can and produce what we can. And then we stop when we run out of money. So we produced six episodes. You know, it had been tainted though. The production had been tainted from the theft. So uh, he, we had the six episodes. So I said to Cedric, I said, you know, for me, Beneath the Lies um, has something about it at, right at this moment where I can't fully engage anymore. I can't create with it. So I'm giving it to you to do what you can with it. And um, ironically, it went on to compete on the continent mm. at, um, at the MVCAs. We were nominated as the best series on the continent after six episodes, ironically. Mm. <laughs> you acted in it. Does, did I that compromise did. production? No, um, we booked a, a gentleman that was supposed to come in and do the role at the time. You see, mm. Ugandan work ethic still leaves a lot to be desired. So you book to do a, a role, we are on set, and then you just don't turn up. Mm. So I just stepped into the role like you do. I said, you know, I wrote the words, I don't have to practice them, give me a dress, put mm. some makeup on my face and let's and then get it done. Yes. yes, so it wasn't a problem you actually being a an lot actress of, in, in, uh, in the production uh, itself. A lot of people, um, when they act opposite me, most Ugandans, mm. they already talk themselves out of the ability to match me mm. as part to part as an actress. You know how you look at someone mm. and you go, oh my God, I can't, I can't, I can't, mm. act. you know, I can't. Lose so a it, bit of self-esteem. Yeah, so I actually mm. had to make my co-star at the time mm. extremely angry for them to come out of the gate like yeah you know uh, running show up oh yeah mm. so i was insulting <laughs> yeah so it's um yeah i mean it did compromise i know people mm. watch you and then you're the producer then you step in and selling people go oh god i'm mm. not going to be able to but it was it was fun yeah. it was nice to be back there here, here, here uh, my challenge about beneath the lies yes the beneath the lies does tackle a few challenges, a few issues in yeah. Uganda. There's promiscuity, fraud, yes. HIV. Yes. It's not enough. No. Yeah. For an everyday program no. with the troubles of Uganda, it needed to go further. It did need to go and it had. If you mm. if we had shown you episode eight, you would mm. have been really flabbergasted. Yeah. The cast had gotten stronger. They were more comfortable in their own skin. Um, I had gotten wiser, so I, I literally was bringing the issues to the table. Mm. 
Um, but again, you see, I am, I am a cat with nine lives. With Mela, you'll be so shocked. I tackle everything from domestic violence to politics, to the ability of people to be so promiscuous in marriages, to the ability of young girls to actually lie to themselves that they're not destroying families just by being a side, these days they call them side chicks, mm. uh, to talk about uh, the economics of a marital home how in these days you can't expect someone to take care of you fully because times have changed. It tackles a lot of things. Um, young girls, it tackles child exploitation. It tackles expectations of um, a culture that we're losing as well as embracing the Western world. Where does one mm. find the balance? It tackles us losing our identity as people. We're being swallowed up by everything around us, especially now the Chinese are buying up Africa. The Western world also had its slice. It tackles uh, corporate espionage, the fact that we're losing resources and countries are not gaining. Mm. So it's a lot of things. I got to do that with Mela because I took time and I really thought I can't come back with yeah. a wishy-washy production. Mm. I'm coming for you guys. Yeah. So yeah, Mela right. gets to do that. Yes, Yeah. because uh, this, this was my challenge exactly. That's, how can you not have politics? Let's, let's look at the Bobby Wine effect yes, right now. Yes, 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 and, yes. And he's brought, some people say he's brought the ghetto, but he's brought theater to politics. I think, I think you effect. have to be a great actor to be a politician, mm. and I think he is exactly what we need at the time. Mm. I mean, there's a lot of debate about Bobby, but to me, it's the ideology he represents. Mm. It's the ability to say, we can be anything we want to be. We don't have to be oppressed if you have a voice. You must use it. Mm. And the irony is people are now using him to say you're either pro-party or you, you, you're pro-this. I don't think that's the debate mm. here. I think that he's a young man who figured out that we needed something. We needed it, uh, something more than our humdrum lives. Mm. We needed to ask questions. And they needed, we needed to be heard as a country again. And we had a... I think we were broken. We're broken people mm. right now. And he's come from a background exactly. where you've not been allowed to be yeah. into politics unless you're writing about exactly. it. Exactly. Because I guess he'd been writing about it before, but now he's shaking up everyone. He's shaking and he's making mm. people uncomfortable. And we need to be uncomfortable. We need to ask the relevant questions. We need to know where we're going mm. as a generation. And people are talking about his supporters are all uh, from the ghetto. I beg to differ. Mm. I really do. Does it matter if they're from the ghetto? Maybe that's what we because need to address. Because a lot of intellectuals, let's face mm. it, we the do not like the ugly side. The now, exactly. So. Mm. We don't like to talk about the ugliness. When we're intellectuals, we like to sit up in our nice chairs, in our nice clothes, and debate issues in our nice houses, and then go to bed sleeping and wake up and go to your job. You're not faced with the real issues. Mm. You're not on the ground. And I think, for me. I'm, I'm, I'm just like, it's time. Yeah. It is time. So it's Nana Kaga is, is addressing these issues in, in Mela. It's, I it's, am. It's, I it's, am. We will not accuse you of chewing gum. No. We'll, we'll have. No, we mm. are a divided, broken nation. And mm. we must at some point figure out how to actually accept our differences, but still do something towards the good of the country. I think for years we've been told if you speak up, it's the same mentality in schools. Mm. When you speak up, you will be punished. And then comes this young man who already has a following through his art and he says, you know what, I, I will speak up and I will make you uncomfortable and I'll shake the nation to the point where people wake up every morning and debate politics. Do you know, I've even gotten goosebumps right. because when you wake up in the morning and you can debate points, fundamental points, and people have different views, but you can debate them with your peers, whether you agree or not. That's living. Mm. That's fighting for a country. I know my children, whatever we leave, whatever Uganda we leave for them today. Yeah, we yeah. stop for a bit. Yes. You're watching NBS Face Off, and I'm Oscar Semwe Amsoke with the lovely Nana Kaga. You're into social change, yes. really into social change. Yes. So how are you gauging your impact? Um, I am on the board of uh, a foundation called See Them Grow. And I was introduced to that by this lovely gentleman called Morgan Chisitu. And he's trying to bring change to Luka district. Mm. And I went there for the first time last week and the poverty is crippling. It is so shocking, you can't wrap your head around why these things are going on. You know, there was, there's, there's an issue that's 
prevalent in Luka. It has mm -hmm. this most amazing soil for sugarcane plantation. So you have investors coming, they're leasing land at ridiculously low prices for long periods and taking the land away from subsistence farming and putting sugarcane on it. So the local populace does not have any land mm. to grow food to sustain a household. And, and sustain growing of exactly. sugarcane does damage to the land. Exactly. Sometimes they burn as well, Exactly, yes. And then mm. you have five-year-old kids chopping sugarcane so they can make 2,000 shillings a day mm. to support the family because daddy ran away because he couldn't do it anymore. So when I advocate for social change, I, I think we all need to be shocked into what's going on into the villages. Mm. While we sit here and we say we have been liberated and we've been given roads, let me beg to differ. A road is a fundamental right of a citizen to have good roads. Medical care is a fundamental right. All these things they're putting out there as achievements, I find that governments are, in mm. fact, I, I, what, what word should I use? They must give them to the citizens. There is no saying, look at what I've done for you. You know, that, that part I mm. find very, very offensive and yeah. condescending. What we need to pat ourselves on the back is when you go to a UPE school and that UPE child can compete with a child here, that's an achievement. Mm. When they have clean water, that's an achievement. When sanitation is met, that's an achievement. When hospitals have medic medicine and you don't have to look for doctors or bribe them, that's an achievement. I, I'm really into social change and I think the only way maybe it can be done because our government says they have accomplished mm. all these things. So as citizens, we need to question, have they? Yeah. And what is our part in changing the landscape yeah. of this country as it sits? So social and change- And we don't have many accomplished women in, in Uganda. It's, 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 it's a shocking. real challenge Yes, I think we have mm. quite a few slay queens though. Uh, mm. Do you know what a slay queen is? Well, there you have it, Asa. <laughs> <laughs> we do, but yes. Um, yes, accomplished women, though, maybe we have them, but they don't mm. speak up. They don't show themselves. They're not out there saying, this is what I have done, and this mm. is what you must look up to. And it's sad because I if know a few. If we could get very many that could live 50% of Nana's life, I mean, that would, that would get us somewhere. I, 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 w I, w I would pray my daughter is 100 times better than me. Mm. You know, my dad keeps saying, so if I raise you in a Mercedes Benz, I expect a private jet. Right. So if you raise these children without giving them that dream, without giving them that hope, without telling them that impossible means I am possible, mm. then we have a problem. Then we really do have a problem as a people. And then at the other end, the ones that accuse the youth of being, uh, of having developed a sense of entitlement, then what do we do? The ones that cannot develop I think, I a think, good work ethic. I think we are, these youth are a product mm of our environment. Everything that happens is seeded in the environment, okay? So we are taking checks mm. to the ghetto and we are handing them out. Then you're asking them to, be, to, to have initiatives, to go out and do something, to have a work ethic. Why would I go work if you're going to bring me money? Mm. Okay, so you, I'll, I can wake up one morning and if I make enough noise, yeah. I'll be given. If I throw a big tantrum, I'll be given. Then you talk about work ethic. You can only develop work ethic if people have jobs to go to, if they're being rewarded for the good work that they're doing, if they're being held accountable for the jobs that they're doing. We do not have that. We have established a culture where you don't have to work to get rich. Mm. You can steal. Okay, and you can still get you the same place. Exactly. So if someone's toiling to get somewhere and someone comes and gives you a sack of money. Mm. It just doesn't make sense, does it? No. You know, entitlement is only developed if you are being given things or not given things. Either way, mm. you still develop a mentality of either self-pity or entitlement. Good way of looking at it. And, and this in our uh, system as well with the youth. Yes. Do we, you've, you've put up a big struggle um, maintaining Nana Kaga mm. and maintaining speaking Luganda. How, how do we manage that? Because you, you, you're, you're a rare. If, if someone who's acted in Star Trek still knowing Luganda is... is oh my, oh my, yeah, that's it's, always it's a impossible. question. It's impossible. I've come across some children who do not know Luganda, who do not know Runyankore, 
who do not know actually. So how, how do we combat that side of things? It is um, knowing who you are. Mm. I think we're raising no, our I want children. to be like Nana. I want to play acting in Star Trek. But who you, you who have, needs Luganda for But that? you have to know who you are because to go after anything in life, first it starts with a sense of self. Mm. And if you deny who you are and parts of yourself and where you come from, wherever you go, you'll only be mediocre. So my children are half Scottish, but mm. by the time I took them to school, they didn't speak English. They only spoke Luganda, because to me, that's their mother tongue. There's a reason they call it a mother tongue. You mm. must pass it down. Mm. Yes. So it was very brave, yeah. getting Scottish children to speak Luganda. Oh, my. No, it wasn't brave. It was mm. a necessity. We need to be able to, they need to stand up and say, Nzesava. Mm. Okay, so their identity lies within. They're still them. young, but do yes. you think they've benefited? They, they have. They're mm. my, my daughter kneels mm. when she greets my, uh, my parents. They must know that elders are people to be revered and respected because our culture teaches you that. When you put on a gomesi, it is automatic self-respect because straight away you stand taller. Mm. You're not exposed. Suddenly you're this regal being. But, you know, I was joking. Or not something to put women exactly. down. Exactly. No, perhaps some view it that way, that Ex we still get you wearing a gomez because uh, we want to keep you buttoned up. I out. think we need to be careful about westernization and its interpretation of our norms. Mm. You know, if you dig too deeply, you always find a caveat of why something will not work. So I, I will not raise my children that way. Now, yeah, our culture did things for a reason. Because up to this day, the fact that I kneel for my father, I can never speak back to him. You know, when he calls me Navatele Gaka Gari, you know, mm. it's, it's serious time. But also my dad, by taking us to boarding school in the UK and making sure I know how to peel matoke and to kneel. And to, if, even when I was in boarding school in the UK, you couldn't talk back to me. I knew who I was. I knew where I came from. Mm. I know that my father, Murangira, Mvamu, you know, even in Hollywood, you know, Hollywood eats its young, and we need to be careful about the film industry because as the film industry grows, it promotes this glamorous thing that strips away morals. And social media pro exactly. uh, propagates it as well, yes. So you are now, you must be like Kim Kardashian, and you forget you are not her. You're never going to be her. But if I know I'm Nana and I can be the best version of Nana and I can speak my language, and even when I look at you and you ask me why am I telling you, mm. yeah. there's a sense of self, it, it propels you to accomplish things and put your name on them knowing exactly mm. who you are. So the, the, the speaking Luganda and maintaining who I am and supposedly my skin color too, that's mm. also a point of debate. I never understood that, but there we have it. Um, yeah. It's Again, we are not promoting a culture of pride that we must hold on to our cultures mm. and also embrace the West. There needs to be balance. Our stories are being lost. Children don't know um, any, and uh, again, uh, I, I try to tell them, the proverb, you yes. know. You, it, yeah, but as, as we end the meeting, yes. the, the, the engineer in you. So who will come out? Will the engineer die and the producer Go up. I, I, there's, um, I interviewed him on NBS Face Off, my yes. good friend Salvador. Yes. And, and he, he left the engineering and, and initially he was sneered upon for having left the engineering, but the, the, it's shining through the comedy. Yes. So what will happen with Nana Hilkaga? The engineer won't die because the engineer comes through my motivation of speaking. Mm. But I'm at a time in my life where I must make programs that matter to a nation that I really, really love. So I need to tell the stories of the voiceless. And at this point in time, I must do that. And I, it keeps me awake mm. because um, if you can't tell stories through film, you don't really have a, uh, I, I don't know how to explain it. For me right now, at this point in time in this country, we must address issues through film, through television, through visual media, through talk shows like you're doing. We must do that, and I must be part of it because I feel like even women don't have a voice. Mm. 
in politics. They don't have a voice in social change. Even on Facebook, if you run statistics, men are the most vocal about politics. We're not out there fighting, and yet it affects more women and children than it does any other demographic. Mm. So at this point in time, the engineer must take a break, but she still does come through well, the motivation. The statistics show that if you get many girls to complete S4, and this has been backed up by World Bank research, yes. if you have many girls uh, complete S4, Uganda will be a richer country. Indeed. Mm. We are the mothers of a nation after all. On that note, Nana Hilkaga, thank you very much for thank appearing on NBS Face Off. I'm thank honored. You very much. And thank yes. you for having me on. <laughs> <Okay. laughs>